Okay, so today we're taking a look at blue-white bogles. Um, so this type of strategy I have played on the channel one time before, and in that one we were looking at the uh, white and black version. But this time we're dropping black and we're picking up the blue color. And this allows us to do some pretty interesting things. So in the previous deck, we were trying to make something really big, give it lifelink and some sort of evasion so that it could kill our opponent. Um, largely, the name of the game is pretty similar here in this type of deck. Um, Bogle's obvious, or may or may not be obvious, but that is the strategy of essentially trying to build up one big evasive creature and then just go over your opponent's defenses and kill them. Um, so we're going to basically be doing that exact strategy here where we have a number of already pretty evasive creatures and um, a deck that just generally revolves around being able to pull out our enchantments from our deck and put them onto the creatures on the battlefield. And uh, this is going to result in some pretty big creatures and we're basically building the deck in such a way that the auras that we can pull out can help us gain extra cards, regain life, or give certain creatures the ability to be evasive and fly over our opponent's defenses. And I say fly specifically because that is generally how we're doing it in this deck. So let's take a look at the creatures first and see what we're going to rock with here. Uh, we have the one of Esper Sentinel. Uh, this is just kind of a nice card to have at any point in the game. Uh, it just gives you a redraw on your opponent's stuff. If you have it early, this can give you a card back if your board gets wiped or stuff like that. So it's nice to have. Um, and then if you can make it really big, it's a guaranteed draw as well. Uh, Skrelv is in this deck as well. Um, he is not so new anymore, but at the time of me initially trying this list, he was uh, one of the newer cards that had just come out. And Skrelv is pretty good, mostly, mostly because his activated ability gives our things toxic. Um, however, if you're playing a deck that is monocolored or the blockers all share a common color, sometimes he can be the difference in what your creature hitting your opponent for lethal or not. Um, so then we have some other things. Illuminator Virtuoso gives us some drawability here, and the fact that it has double strike is generally pretty relevant. Um, we're running them just as a two of because you don't really want this thing all the time. Uh, it's good, but not amazing. Um, what we do have as a four of though is Core Spirit Dancer here and Light Paws. If you watched my last video with uh, Orzov Bogles, then you will recognize these cards. Core Spirit Dancer, absolute playmaker of a card here. Uh, plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it, and it triggers a draw on each aura cast. So that's pretty awesome. This thing is definitely worth a four of. And then Light Paws is the uh, card that makes this whole archetype worth it. Um, it's the two mana 2-2 two, two that says whenever you put an aura onto the battlefield that you've cast, you get to find another one of equal or lesser CMC from your library and put it onto Light Paws. So for Light Paws, what we want to be doing is keeping it around the battlefield. So we're going to want to find a lot of things that give it hexproof, evasion, or things like that. Or we want to have like a scroll out so that it can be um, protected. <clears throat> and then finally, we have Invisible Stalker, uh, the two mana hexproof, unblockable creature. Uh, this one is just good to start putting all of your uh, enchantments on because, well, it's going to be hard to interact with outside of a board wipe and it will get through your opponent's defenses. Um, and so those are all the creatures in the deck. And if we take a look at the things that we're going to be putting on these cards, um, You'll notice that Curious Obsession, a card that in the mono blue tempo decks you run as a four of, here we're only running it as a one of. And this is because while it's a very good card, um, we have a strictly better card in this specific sense uh, in Staggering Insight. Um, to, to talk about Curious Obsession, uh, the fact that this gives us plus one and the draw clause is very, very strong. Um, but the issue here is that if you didn't attack, you have to sacrifice it. And that's sometimes a problem. Um, but if we've designated a creature to be our beatdown creature, then uh, it's pretty good to just search for our Curious Obsession as a one of. Uh, we don't want to draw it too much in situations where it may hurt us. We have Combat Research. Um, this one is just uh, exactly the same sort of deal. However, this uh, cares about the creature being legendary. So we're running Skrelv and Light Paws. Uh, both are pretty good uh, targets for Combat Research. So generally we'll want to be... Uh, fetching those out to put a, um, a Ward 1 onto Light Paws. And as we can do that more and more times, then this will help us stay alive through uh, targeted removal. Um, because we're not running the black uh, color here, we don't have access to uh, Kaya's Ghost Form and things of that effect that can bring our things back to hand. So we basically just need our things to not be targeted. So Invisible Stalker, that is why that's in there. 
Um, again, we have some things that need to be in here to give our things evasion. So Arcane Flight is one of them, gives plus one, plus one is fl and flying. Um, generally, you want to just save this until you have a lethal turn set up. Sentinel Eyes, another all-star in these types of decks, gives uh, plus one, plus one vigilance. You love to see it. Plus, if it gets milled or you lose it, then you can cast it from the graveyard. Um, we have another flying type effect in Griff's Boon, um, and this is a similar sort of deal where uh, you can cast it from the graveyard, so it's pretty valuable. We only need to run it as a two of because it's not the best thing that we could do, but it is pretty good regardless. Then, of course, this wouldn't be a Bogle's deck without Ethereal Armor and All That Glitters. Um, in this deck, we're actually running only two All That Glitters since our curve is actually a lot lower. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, and then, yeah, continuing on in that two-drop slot, we have Aether Tunnel. Uh, this is another thing that gives the can't be blocked, um, the can't be blocked trigger to our light pause if we want it. And then there's a one of Cartouche of Knowledge. This is another one uh, that gives us flying. So we have flying on both the two and one CMC uh, search triggers. And then finally, the card that I mentioned earlier, Staggering Insight, uh, white and blue. Give it uh, plus one, plus one, and lifelink. The lifelink's pretty uh, valuable here. And then uh, whenever you uh, deal damage, draw a card as well. So you're getting a lot of stuff out of all of these uh, auras. Uh, triggers off, of course, Spirit Dancer. The Knives off of Virtuoso. And um, yeah, as soon as they get in and hit your opponent, then you're also profiting. So quite a lot of things to do here. Um, because we are two or less mana, we can run Luris as our companion. So if things go to the graveyard... Well, that's our way to get them back. So it's kind of as if we were running the um, the Kai's Ghost Swarm type effects, but it's just a little bit slower. Um, and if we take a look at the mana base, we are down to 20 lands here. It's not as low as the uh, Orzhov build that I ran previously, but um, you know, 20 lands is definitely lower than the average for sure. Uh, I think this is a pretty tight list. You definitely get some really quick games here, um, and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys some of those today. Uh, that's it for the deck tech. Let's hop into some games with Azorius Bogles. All right, we got a round one coming in. Let's see what we get here. Um, we have a light pause right off the rip, and then on turn three, we can either... We can do Curious Obsession onto light pause, or decide to make a Invisible Stalker with Curious Obsession. Um, and this is definitely a keep. But um, the way that I'm going to play turn three is going to be slightly interesting. So if my opponent is going to play something that could block Light Pause, I won't be able to do the play of playing Invisible Stalker and then a Curious Obsession on the Stalker because if I don't get to attack with Light Pause, then Curious Obsession gets sacrificed. So what I'm going to do is I'll drop out a Light Pause on turn two, see if they provide a creature or kill it or whatever. And actually... All of that's going to change now because I see that we're playing uh, some sort of Azorius control deck. So what I will do here is I will just put out a Hexproof Creature. Um, wow, they got the sensor, so this is uh, going to try to tempo us out here. Luckily we have Skrelv and Light Paws coming out. However, I'm a little bit worried about doing that because uh, they are representing a board wipe next turn. So we have three mana here to work with. Uh, what would we like to do? We have a Lurus. We may want to put that into our hand. Uh, we could also just start to get a Skrelv going, or we can start getting a Light Paws out. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking that maybe we go with the Skrelv, and then maybe we redraw off of Cartouche. Uh, this allows to check our opponent's hand for some sort of counter magic. Um, so they have some non-creature spell, probably Dovin's Veto. They can counter that kind of thing. Um, okay, so it's a march. Uh, they get the two for one there, and we're going to be kind of in trouble here. Um, this is the blue-white matchup that we weren't really hoping for. And now what I'm going to have to do is run out the light pause. And if they have the counter spell for that, then that's going to be tough. Um, we do get out of it, and we can start to suit up our light pause, but this may be a fatal absence here. Okay, Dovin's Veto is not as bad because we do get the light pause onto the battlefield. Um, he can play our land here. I assume we'll probably just run out a Curious Obsession Staggering Insight. Um, the question is, do I want to get a Lurus out or play two things onto our Light Paws? I think I do want to get some things onto Light Paws. 
I think they probably give us this. Uh, we do get to take an action here, and what can we do here? I mean, I can give it ward, but our opponent probably has some sort of targeted removal, if not a board wipe. So maybe uh, I can get all that glitters and I can give it lifelink as well. So I think what I'll want to do is uh, get an ethereal armor. All that glitters and then find another staggering insight. We'll see if they counterspell me here or remove light paws. Okay, so they just censor me. That's okay. Um, we do get to go in here. They did not have the removal spell. Uh, I get to draw a card here, and then we'll have to see what this next turn looks like. I can uh, put Luris into my hand and play a Staggering Insight next turn. So hopefully they just don't find a board wipe here. Oh, they found the Fateful Absence for Light Paws. That's tough. Okay, so if that's the case, then uh, I'll be able to just do... Let me put this in as a blue mana source. Uh, I get to put Luris into my hand and then just draw a card. Feels a little bad, but it is what it is. And then we just need to deal with our opponent trying to find a board wipe. And we just kind of got to get lucky here and push in really quickly. Uh, it's going to be a race for us to be able to do stuff versus our opponent to be able to uh, counterspell or kill our things. So... We have Luris plus play something from the graveyard, probably the Light Paws. Oh wait, did they exile the Light Paws? They did not. Okay, cool, that's good. Uh, if they counter Luris, then I have Skrelv Combat Research, and we'll at least have something on the battlefield. Looks like... Oh, no. So we get to hold, uh, hold control here and get a Light Paws out. And uh, let's see what they take. Looks like they have some sort of removal spell. Uh, it's a March of Otherworldly Light, okay. So we lose our um, <clears throat> light pause, but we do have Luris. So this is okay. This means that I can get a stalker out. We just need to get some creatures here. That's the most important thing. And then let's see. So I can tax them on Luris. Or I can try to get some draws out here. I can also just play a Luris as well. I think I'm going to go a little bit wide since they just have one card here. Um, and then Staggering Insight probably needs to start having me draw cards. So I'm going to play that out. And then, yeah, we get multiple cards if we put this on Luris. So let's hope that this is not a March of Otherworldly Light. Opponent goes to 10. Potentially. Nope. They have it. Wow, they have the Igonjo. Unfortunate. So, I needed to hold up Skrelv. That's tough. Well, now we're looking like we're in a bit of a trouble here. Uh, they have Field of Ruin. No, they're just doing us Kanta. Okay. Well, our opponent's in top deck mode and they find Supreme Verdict. Oh my gosh. That might be the straw that broke the camel's back right there. I think we might not be able to come through. That's so demoralizing. Bummer. And I've drawn three uh, Sentinel's Eyes here. Crap. Uh, I think if they find another targeted removal, then we're in trouble. I mean, this Narset, that's tough. <clears throat> if we find a Light Pause, that's probably our closest thing to... Ooh, to Fairy. Yeah, I don't know about that. They're going to Teferi plus, so they're going to reserve their minus. This means I need to start getting some ward up, but they will be able to pay for it. Um, yeah, it's going to be tough here. I'll have to look for another creature. Oh, and they just have the absorb there. Okay, well, I think we'll play until the Teferi gets his minus. But with them already back up at 18 life, I'm not sure we can come back from this. I think our window is passed. Um, another Fumigate? Okay, yeah. We can't really do anything at instant speed here. I mean, yeah, Invisible Stalker doesn't really even do it. Okay, we'll uh, give this one to the opponent not waste too much more of either of our time. And uh, yeah, let's just hop into round two and uh, let's see if we can blaze through. 
All right, we got our round two here. This hand's got a bunch of creatures, and it does have the staggering insight. I'm kind of interested in keeping this. Um, so we can go Skrelvin to Core Spirit Dancer into Staggering Insight. Alright. Okay, so Black Mana, is this for a Fatal Push or for a Creature? Inquisition, so we're going to lose probably Staggering Insight. That's our card draw spell. They may take Core Spirit Dancer, though. If they took one of the creatures, I feel pretty happy. If this is some sort of control deck, they may just take the Spirit Dancer. Oh, interesting. Well, I think that it would be pretty good to start drawing cards here. Um, though, that does mean... I think what I should do here is I should play Core Spirit Dancer and then just hold Skrelv up as a, uh, as a Hexproof Giver. Okay. So we give them one poison, though that is not going to be our main form of gameplay here. We are still a deal 20 damage to your face before you can do anything about it deck. Okay, so they hold up one mana here. We do find the light pause, that's huge. Um, so if that's going to be the case, then I maybe just want to do Staggering Insight here on the Spirit Dancer. I'll get my draw in here, and maybe we just play this a bit slower. Destroy Skrelv, okay. Um, well, I don't have anything to do with one mana, so let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, Hex Roof from Black. I will draw my card here. It is a white mana, and we get in for three, so... Let's get our card here. We do have our land for next turn, so this means that I can go Light Pause into two spells. I'm going to kill the Spirit Dancer. That's a bummer, but it's okay. Uh, I'll probably just get multiple combat researches in here. Um, let's do like this. So combat research getting combat research seems like the move. Uh, combat research. They'll need the fatal push in response. <clears throat> okay, so now we're safe. Uh, I will take action. I would like to get, if I could, another... Oh, wait. Arcane Flight... Um, okay, so two combat researches. Okay. Um, so that's fine. Uh, what we'll do instead is uh, let's go ahead and get ethereal armor then. Or vigilance. Either ethereal armor or vigilance. I'll get that out. Uh, then we can give it sentinel's eyes. Um, and yeah, so the reason is that uh, it's a we can't get uh, the same named thing here. Uh, so that's fine. And then plus O plus O flying, or would we like Curious Obsession? We can't take that. Um, I think we'll take Arcane Flight here. Uh, it doesn't go to the graveyard, but that's okay. And then our next turn can be playing an Ethereal Armor plus a Lurus. I'm just hoping that uh, there's not some sort of removal spell here. Uh, we get another Griff's Boon, that's not bad. My hope here is that we just get to put a Lurus into hand and get an Ethereal Armor out. Uh, our graveyard has a couple of things here, nothing too interesting. And there's a Soaring Thought Thief, okay. So this is uh, r mill Milling Rogues. Um, I would not like to block anything with Death Touch, so that is okay. And I think what I'll do is just Lurus in here. I think that my opponent will decide to block. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Okay. And uh, now that means that I can get a Skrelv out in the Skrelv. Well, while it can't activate right now, um, it's okay. I could make a play to put Ethereal Armor on Skrelv. But uh, at this point, we just got to hope that Light Pause is not going to be a problem. Or is not going to die. I'm going to hold the Ethereal Armor here. It's gonna be kind of tough. Um, so they have five mana here. I gotta think about what they can do. <clears throat> they could have another instant speed removal spell or even sorcery. 
Uh, they go for into the story and they go down to one mana, which means that they cannot remove Light Paws. Okay, so I'll probably lose Luris here. Yep. But uh, as it stands, they're dead. They can't remove Skrull for zero mana, as far as I'm aware. And cool, they see what's going to happen to them. Awesome. So uh, yeah, we just kind of got lucky there and we dodged the uh, targeted removal that we needed to. That's pretty much how this deck goes. It's really under the radar kind of stuff. Like we, we need to go fast, fast, fast. And if the opponent hasn't picked a hand that can deal with our aggressive start, then they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, very good best of one deck. That's a strategy that you do get paid off pretty well for. So uh, we're one in one after two rounds. Let's hop into round three. Here we go. All right, here in round three. We have just one creature to start, but the staggering insights seem pretty good. I'm going to give it a try. We'll see who we are facing here. Uh, as long as it's not a turn one Thoughtseize, I feel pretty good. But honestly, this is just as bad. They're going to have the Flavor Fires to uh, deal with what we're doing. So I got to think about what I want to do here. Um, this is either some sort of Hammer Time build or it is some sort of spell-based removal. And honestly, that's going to do pretty well against me until I can get some hex-proofy things on my creatures. Um, it will need to be a staggering insight, but yeah, I'm not feeling super good about this hanging this Illuminator Virtuoso. Um, but what other choice do I have? I think we're just going to send it. If it survives this turn, we can put two things on it, so... Maybe there's a chance. Okay, so this is definitely Boris equipment. Uh, we would not see some sort of planes thing. So I feel maybe not the worst about hanging this uh, Virtuoso. Cacophony Scamp is kind of indicative of this sort of thing. They want to put a hammer onto it and uh, deal damage when it uh, dies. So, okay, this is actually not the worst thing that could happen. We have our turn three given to us. And uh, Seasoned Hollow Blade is a bit of a problem because we need to make our creature size four or bigger, which we can. Um, yeah, we get to connive here. I have two lands in hand. I'm considering dropping one of them to the connive. Ether Tunnel, not too bad. Uh, I'm going to get rid of Hollow Fountain here. We've got enough blue mana sources currently. And uh, I can drop my land for turn and put an ethereal armor onto virtuoso and so this thing is going to be big enough to deal with the season hollow blade now um i can discard an ether tunnel i think yeah they need to keep their things so this is this is funny because this will eventually be relevant and i'll need it however however what if i get rid of staggering insight Okay, so what I'm thinking of is eventually they're going to get a hammer on something and I'll need to have the ether tunnel uh, situation here. So if I discard Staggering Insight, sure, I'm not going to be able to get that trigger on damage, but they have so many blockers and they're probably just going to use the Season Hollow Blade. Okay, so now we got a 5-5. Five, five. <clears throat> that means that it can uh, first strike down any of the stuff and deal damage to my opponent. So they're looking at 10 to the face here. They may just choose to Season Hollow Blade and make it indestructible. So that's fine. Uh, luckily, I get to gain 10 life out of this. So I'm feeling great. Uh, this is going to make their hammer play a lot worse. And I just feel amazing about the Ether Tunnel play now. So my next turn is going to be Core Spirit Dancer plus Ether Tunnel onto Virtuoso. And my opponent is going to look pretty bad here pretty quickly. Um... So this is not some sort of reanimator thing, or they would have dropped off a big artifact or vehicle. We go to 30, and damage heals. Um, so we don't feel bad about Sigarda's aid into Colossus Hammer just now. Um, that will be okay. <coughs> yeah, even Cacophony Scamp only can do 20 damage to us. Um, now, what we would lose to is land Sigarda's aid double hammer, because that's capable of us dealing 40, that's uh, 40 damage that they can deal to us. 
So they find the hammer. Okay. So they might have the cigar to Zade. Okay. I forget who started. Turns out it was me. So is this going to be cigar to Zade? <clears throat> Ooh, they don't play it. Okay, so I get to put my land out. Uh, we'll put this on white. And then Core Spirit Dancer comes out. We'll put an Ether Tunnel on two. <clears throat> oh, I could put it on the Spirit Dancer, but that just needs to be a blocker. Yeah, this thing needs to just start getting in. So Virtuoso getting big here. We're getting somewhat close to a two turn clock. Well, we are on a two turn clock already. Uh, <clears throat> we're not going to make the one turn clock here, sadly. And uh, I'll discard a Sentinel, guys. That's huge. So we have an 8-7. That's 16 damage. 16 lifelink for us. And if they can't deal with Illuminator Virtuoso, then they are going to be dead in the following turn. So the onus is on them to play something here. They go to 4. Uh, we do get to draw uh, two cards off of the, um, uh, what is it, the Staggering Insight, so that's kind of cool. And I forget if I've made a land drop this turn, I do think that I have. We have our next two land drops here, which is cool. And uh, yeah, let's see what our opponent has for us. Um, Colossus Hammer, sure. Cacophony Scamp can actually kill Virtuoso. So I will need to block with Spirit Dancer. Oh, they just go in, so... Uh, what I do need to do here is I need to prevent Cacophony Scamp dealing damage, and they may just be able to uh, put the hammer on it. So this is definitely the move, because I need to keep my Virtuoso alive for next turn. Let's see what the move is here. They may just attach Hammer to Hollow Blade. I put them in a tough spot here, and I think their move was probably to flash in... I'm forgetting the name of the card, but there's something like Resolute Strike that allows you to attack. Yep, Resolute Strike. There it is. Um, cool. So, unfortunately, this does not give them the ability to sacrifice Cacophony Scamp. So, it looks like we're going to get in here. <clears throat> Unless they have a Thud. They could have a Thud. Kemba. Okay. But uh, this is not going to do it, unfortunately, because Illuminator Virtuoso cannot be blocked. Uh, we'll show them the light pause, and uh, they realize that they're dead. Cool. That was our round three, and we did it in a pretty convincing fashion against the Hammer Time deck. All right, let's move on to round four. We got two more. All right, round four. Let's go. Um, so we have two creatures here and two spells, or two auras. I feel okay about this. Um, so if I see black mana, I'm going to be playing the Invisible Stalker to get around any targeted removal. Um, and then, if not, Core Spirit Dancer is the more aggro of the two cards, plus it gives me card draw. Seeing a forest, I'm very happy. Um, let's see, I'm going to put out the Seacrum Coast, and we'll get a Spirit Dancer out. So our next turn looks like Staggering Insight plus Esper Sentinel. Elvish Archdruid, you got it. Uh, combat research is going to be pretty good. Um, we definitely get Staggering Insight out here. I will draw. Um, and then it's either Esper Sentinel or Combat Research. Because this already has lifelink, I think I just want to make it really, really big. So I'll play this on blue and Combat Research my Spirit Dancer. And we are just going to draw back up to full here, and we'll even uh, we'll be just barely not needing to discard. So Elves is going to go wide, uh, but they may need to be the ones that need to block us. We will see. Uh, Ether Tunnel is about to be huge, so we will see what happens. Frailies, sure. <clears throat> They can untap the Archdruid. Okay. Kogla, wow. They just had something that was big enough. This is actually perfect against our uh, Spirit Dancer because Kogla doesn't die. Wow. Okay, so now we have to do something a little different here and get a Invisible Stalker out. 
And uh, let's get a Esper Sentinel Ethereal Armor out. Just pop that onto the Stalker. And that is at least something that will not be able to be blocked. So hopefully this will be uh, enough to keep us alive. We went up 10 life. So that buys us one more turn against this Kogla strategy. My opponent, notably, is just on uh, a couple of mana here, or two lands. That shows you the power of Elvis Arch Druid and Llanowar Elves. Impressive. Nykthos, what a card. I feel like I've never really had too much, um, too much luck with Devotion decks, but we are seeing a pretty strong showing from here. If you guys have any fun Devotion-based decks that uh, you think I could play, drop them in the comments and I'll take a look. Um, I know that there's obviously uh, the Simic Devotion, there's you Mono Green Devotion. Um, I have seen some Mono Black Devotion decks too. Um, but I think we're just going to get <laughs> walloped on here. We'll need some big blocks, or some big uh, lifelink to happen here. Okay. Uh, they do just get to straight up destroy one of my things. And uh, yeah, that is actually going to really just destroy us here. Um, let's see, so Light Pause, that is something. We'll put that onto Light Pause and maybe we can get some sort of Staggering Insight. Uh, now if we give something flying, that would be good. But yeah, we don't really have, we may need like an ossification or two in this deck to deal with a big, uh, big threat. I added those to the Orzhov build of Bogles, but you know, sometimes it's not really that useful and you cannot search for it off of Light Pause to get the effect. Um, Ethereal Armor is eventually going to be a good one. I think that I'll just take a thing that gives it flying maybe. Yeah, because I can draw a card out of this. Uh, unfortunately, it's just land, so that's tough. Um, we don't want them to get Regal Force, so I will attack with uh, Mr. Stalker <laughs> here. A formidable threat. And, uh, I mean, this is just going to be difficult here. <laughs> but it won't matter. They've got the hook. All right. Well, uh, this is the power of green. They are going to have us here. We blossom with nature's um, they can even... Give base 5-5 five, five with Allosaurus Shepherd if they'd like, but you know that I am not going to be blocking this. There's no way. Alright. Bang. And we will declare no blocks. No, they're just going for it. Uh, opponent gets a swing in here. Alright. Well, yeah, it's not that often that I lose to a 2-lander with a 17-devotion Nykthos. Uh, that's definitely a spectacle to see, so at least we got to experience something rare. Uh, that was our round four. We got one more to go. Let's finish strong here with uh, our Resorius Bogles. All right, we're here in the final round. I ha This is my third attempt to re-record this game because we played one where I just got ran over after uh, land flooding, and then uh, I ran into a deck that, a control deck that basically turned the corner on me and then just AFK'd until they lost the game. So that was interesting. Um, Invisible Stalker plus Staggering Insight seems like something that we'd like to do. Plus we just get Arcane Flight on turn three. I think I like the sound of that. So let's go ahead and Hollow Fountain, Sea Chrome Coast, and then Invisible Stalker. Then we have... Staggering Insight plus that. <clears throat> Alright, we got our hand mapped out here. So, turn two, we got an Invisible Stalker. We have another one if we do Carrier to have a second attacker. Esper Control seems like the matchup here. They can play Shieldred's Edict. I doubt they have that, though. What are the odds? So definitely Esper, that's for sure. And the fact that they haven't played anything yet definitely makes me think that this is going to be some sort of counterspell type deal. Let's put an Arcane Flight onto this. Uh, that just resolved real quick, so I'm going to go ahead and put out the Staggering Insight. Uh, we get to go in here and draw a card, that's cool. Alright. Um, so I'm going to hold up another <laughs> Stalker here. 
And uh, hopefully my opponent just does something here. This is a board wipe, hundred percent. Doom foretold. Okay. Let's uh, get rid of arcane flight. Yeah, we want to keep staggering insight. All right. Uh, this is actually fine for us. Uh, we don't really mind too much about this. So we'll put a staggering insight onto this creature. Ethereal armor. And uh, then we can put in a tapped land. I should have seen what I drew first, but that's okay. Yeah, I could have put in another ethereal armor on it. It's okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is just Esper Doom Foretold. So they have a lot of permanence. Portable hole. Well, luckily, my invisible stalker can't be targeted. So I think they take ethereal armor. If they don't take ethereal armor, they're going to be dead, because I have a second one. They took ethereal armor. Okay. So I will need to play my other ethereal. Okay, so we're going to lose one of the staggering insights. Combat research is good. Ethereal armor, also good. Uh, we get a 5-5, five, five, and then the question is, uh, do I care to play Aether Tunnel? And I don't really care, because I just need to draw some uh, cards here. And we got to put some garbage enchantment onto this thing. I think that Aether Tunnel is going to be the move here. Um, I can also just buy Luris if that ends up being relevant. We can probably just put a ether tunnel out. This means that they are going to lose their portable hole. Ethereal absolution, I think I do get to place back onto the stalker. Um, we'll put that in because it's tapped. So are they going to get rid of their hole? I think that's the only thing that they can do. So this goes back onto invisible stalker. Now they have to find a blocker here or a removal spell or board wipe. We're still not clear here. Omen. They have to find Divine Purge here or have a land plus board wipe. Hey, we were able to do it. All right. Well, that is the Bogle's way. Uh, either we win through aggro or we play a long game that really doesn't favor us. So uh, definitely some decently quick games here today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as a reminder, it helps me out a lot for uh, all of the likes and subscriptions to uh, come through. So if you enjoyed the video and want to see more content in Historic here and maybe in one of the other formats sometime soon, uh, come stick around and uh, maybe we'll get some of that content out soon. Uh, at any rate, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. We got content coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so stay tuned. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.